From the Dignity Health Studio at the Bakersfield Californian, this is Strictly Business, presented by the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Sponsored in part by the Law Offices of Young Wooldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital. And now here's your host, Cindy Pollard, President and CEO of the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on this Monday, September 8th. Hope you had a wonderful Labor Day holiday last Monday. Uh, You had a chance to see the best of Strictly Business shows. Thanks for coming back live with us today. On today's show, Jim Damien of Stria will join us to talk about going paperless in your organization. And then a little bit later in the show, Jimmy Phillips from San Joaquin Community Hospital will be here to discuss outside-of-the-box public relations ideas that they're using to promote their upcoming Gospel Fest. But first, let's take a look at some news you can use. In an unprecedented decision, a California Court of Appeal recently ruled that an employer must reimburse an employee if the employee is required to use a personal cell phone to make work-related calls, even when the employee did not incur an extra expense by making the work calls because he or she had an unlimited data plan. The clear answer from the court? Reimbursement is always required. To comply with the labor code, an employer must pay some reasonable percentage of the employee's cell phone bill. There is just one week left to apply for SBA disaster loans. Small non-farm businesses in 35 California counties and neighboring counties in Arizona and Nevada have until September 15th, that's next Monday, to apply for an economic injury disaster loan. These loans are to offset economic losses because of reduced revenues to farmers and ranchers caused by the drought that began on January 1st of this year. Small non-farm businesses, small agricultural cooperatives, small businesses engaged in aquaculture, and most private nonprofit organizations of any size may qualify for economic injury disaster loans of up to $2 million to help meet financial obligations and operating expenses, which could have been met had the disaster not occurred. Applicants may apply online using the electronic loan application via SBA's secure website at https colon forward slash forward slash disasterloan.sba.gov forward slash ELA, and you see it on the slide on your screen. The Department of Water Resources and other state and federal agencies leading the Bay Delta Conservation Plan will publish a recirculated draft environmental impact report, environmental impact statement, that's EIR, EIS, and implementing agreement in early 2015. The agencies are currently reviewing the comments received through the public comment period that ended on July 29th. The scope of the partially recirculated draft documents will be announced in approximately six to eight weeks. The recirculated documents will include those portions of each document that warrant another public review prior to publication of the final documents. The public will also have the opportunity to review the final documents prior to their adoption and any decisions about proposed actions. California's record employment level continues to climb. California accounted for 13.3% or 27,700 of all jobs added in the nation in July. The state's unemployment rate remained unchanged at 7.4% in July on a seasonally adjusted basis. Here's how those numbers break down by industry, and you'll get a chance to see them on your screen as well. Healthcare added 10,200 new positions. Leisure and hospitality added 6,400 new positions. Professional scientific and technical services sector added 5,900 positions. Retail and manufacturing both added 5,400 new positions, and government added 4,600 new positions. Following a flurry of last-minute activity, the California State Legislature ended the 2013-2014 session on August 31st, bringing with it a slew of changes that will affect businesses throughout the state 
if the governor signs them into law. Governor Brown has until September 30th to sign or veto bills that were passed by the legislature before September 1st and that are in his possession on or after September 1st. Let's take a look at some of the changes we could expect. SB 270, which is one that a lot of people um, have heard about, would make California the first state in the nation to ban single-use plastic bags. Uh, that passed despite fierce opposition from plastic bag manufacturers and after initially failing an assembly vote last week or two weeks ago. Brown has indicated that he plans to sign th the bill into law. Uh, the bill by Sem Senate Democrats phases out the use of single use plastic bags beginning at grocery stores and pharmacies in July 2015 and the next year at convenience stores and liquor stores. The legislature approved two bills that put California in line with other states by regulating groundwater in an effort to address harmful overdrafting, particularly during the state's drought. These bills, AB 1739 by Assemblyman Roger Dickinson out of Sacramento and SB 1168 by Senator Fan Fran Pavley out of Agoura Hills, uh, the bills would require priority groundwater basins to become sustainable by 2040 and faced strong opposition from organizations and municipalities throughout the state, including the Kern County Board of Supervisors right here at home. Lawmakers would add $100 million to the University of California and California State University systems under AB 1476 by Assemblywoman Nancy Skinner. The added boost was originally intended for the systems if the state received a certain revenue level from po property taxes. Skinner said the taxes fell just short and pushed for the funding anyway. AB 1476 also included $3 million for nonprofits helping undocumented minors from Central America with legal aid. Small wineries are suffering big losses following the earthquake that hit Napa a few weeks ago. Although tasting rooms up and down the valley are open, tens of thousands of cracked and broken wine barrels were still being plucked from winery rubble a week after the earthquake. Damages have topped $48 million and are growing, with some boutique wineries losing most, if not all, of their 2013 vintages. That's tens of thousands of gallons of top quality Pinot Noir and Cabernet Sauvignon down the drain, so to speak. The smaller wineries were primary victims because most of them rent out warehouse space at places that were damaged in the quake. The damage included hoses, pumps, barrel lifts, washers, valve shutoffs, tank fixtures, portable cooling units, forklifts, and other processing equipment smashed by flying barrels. David Dobbs, owner of Imbibe Wine, a Bakersfield wine and spirits retailer, was in Napa, I believe, when the quake hit. He's joining us by phone now. David, are you with me? Yes, I am. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, thank you. Great. Now, I understand that you were in Napa when the quake hit. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, we went up Saturday morning um, to uh, be a part of a, a big gala dinner up on Pritchard Hill. Uh, they were showing off their wines up on Pritchard Hill and went to that, that event and went to our room later that evening and sit around and visited and went to bed and got woke up by a big earthquake about 3 o'clock in the morning. Three, I think about 3.20 it happened. Must have been pretty scary. Um, yeah, well, you know what? I, we were pretty... We were, I was about 20 miles north of the epicenter uh, in the uh, town of Santa Elena. But most of, the, most of the damage is really down south in the city of Napa and, and also farther south, American Canyon, which is right by the Napa airport. Um, it, it was. It was, uh, I don't know, living in Southern California prior to moving home. We've been lucky enough to, uh, fortunate enough to go through a few of them. So right, right. It was uh, something to be expected. Right. So we've heard about some of the preliminary damage. Do you think there's going to be long-term effects to the industry as a result of the quake? Um, yeah, good question. You know, I, I, tell you, I spoke to a lot of vintners while I was up there. We, the quake happened uh, early Sunday morning, and then uh, Sunday we, we ran around with a lot of producers and visited with them. Um, yeah, yes and no. There's, you know, the small guys, are, it's going to be a tremendous hit because they lost their production. And when you're, unlike other products, beer or soda pop, you just don't add water. You have to wait for Mother Nature to produce another crop. So they're going to be out, out of the market for a year. Uh, the larger folks, you know, again, they make quite a bit of wine and they store it in different locations. So I think they, they, they're going to deal with it a little bit better. Right. Um, for price-wise, I don't, I, don't, I don't, 
the problem is, you know, the wine the wine's a world economy, so whatever, if the price is going to go up too high in California, consumers are going to go to other parts of the world, be it Spain or Italy or France or even Paso Robles, and there's a, we have a lot of choices. So I, it's, uh, they, I'm sure they're going to need to raise prices, but I don't know if they have the luxury of doing that. Right. Well, you know, it seems like the industry has taken a double whammy between the drought and now the earthquake, particularly um, the, the wineries up in, you know, the far north of California. What type of an impact do you expect to see on your business and maybe uh, other retailers? Well, the, the, the main, the biggest impact is just, you know, I feel for my friends, but I, I think as a consumer, again, there's, there's wines being produced all around the world. So um, if you're strictly set on buying Napa Valley wines, you're, you're going to feel it in your pocketbook. If you're open to buy, purchasing wines from other parts of the world, I don't think it's going to affect you, but, again, it's, it does affect a lot of close friends. Right. But you, you can find a good bottle of wine from somewhere else. Right. Are there any lessons learned maybe going forward that the industry might take away from this experience? Well, I, I think if anybody has been through a large earthquake, you, you know, you, you get humbled and, you, you know, you talk about you look into insurance and you look into being prepared for the next one. But uh, as you start doing that and you realize the premiums are quite high and the deductibles are so high, and the earthquakes are so far and few between, um, you, just, you just pray you don't live through too many of them. Right. You have to go. So to answer your question, I don't, I don't know how you, you would be better prepared other than paying big premiums on insurance. Um, I mean, those places are pretty well fortified. Most, most of the damage I saw was really in, in the structural buildings, mm-hmm. uh, really the, the old part of Napa Valley, the, the hotels and the old properties that were built back in the 20s and 30s. Right. Uh, so... Right. And maybe another suggestion, maybe, you know, a lot of these warehouses, they're, you know, maximum capacity, and they stack their barrels five and six high. Maybe in the future they'll stack them two or three high. Uh, so it wouldn't, they won't have a tendency to, to tip over. Right, and maybe potentially put some of your uh, inventory in a couple of different places rather than all in one place, maybe? There you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe the wines are lesser value or higher, you know, up higher in the stack. The more valuable wines stay on ground, you know, on the ground. Yeah. Uh, Another, another thought. Good point. David, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hope you have a great week. You too. Thank you, Cindy. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. I'm Cindy Pollard with the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. You're watching Strictly Business. We're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsors. And when we come back, we'll be talking to Jim Damien with Stria about how you can take your organization paperless. We'll be right back. 